And here we are on the streets of Manhattan. <laughs> this has been a few episodes for Rarity's favorite cities. Two in a row in Canterlot and then one in Manhattan. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 16, Made in Manhattan. Manhattan. My damn puns! <laughs> Made in Manhattan. Damn puns. <laughs> the puns. And now to the actual episode. <laughs> I love how they're like hinting to something with poor Twilight. This is like the second time they've deliberately pointed out that the map is not choosing her. Well, one of the problems with being an Alicorn princess is you're too OP. <laughs> I can fix this. Poof. The park is done. Poof! I do this. Poof! What do you need? Poof! What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> Aladdin reference check. <laughs> uh, and just the continuity for this season so far, I, I think it's thanks to a little person named M.A. Larson who accidentally ended up in charge of the overall story for this season. <laughs> Well, not the story, but story supervision. So he's making sure that the little things get dropped in there. Yeah, the reference. Oh, we're going to miss the Sister Who social, probably. And, oh, Coco Pamel, a pony from last season. Mm-hmm. Ah, and even though we want newer locations, going back to Manhattan again. Puns. Yes, and that nice little callback of, oh, Manhattan, what you do to me. I almost thought she was going to burst out into song and just reuse the song from last season. And I don't remember Applejack being this um, nervous about Manhattan in the previous episode when she was there. No, definitely not. So I think that was a little overplayed. And also, she's been around High Society Ponies before. Let's see, not just the um, Grand Galloping Gala, but when she was a filly, she went with her relatives and did all that high society stuff and, you know, decided it wasn't for her, but she was still there. Yeah, and with the title of this episode, I thought it may be involving something about Applejack. I got some vague information, even though I try to avoid spoilers like the plague, that this episode was going to be a rarity and applejack episodes was like oh made in manhattan are they gonna like go back and visit aj's relatives is that what we're going for and you know we don't even know for certain that aj's relatives still live in manhattan you know that was back when she was a philly also yay for the return of a table tree castle map episode <laughs> yep took you long enough <laughs> okay we've had pinkie pie rainbow dash applejack and rarity so that leaves us fluttershy and twilight i have this odd feeling that fluttershy is going to actually go out on her own which would actually be a good thing for her it would but twilight's getting very frustrated and i can understand being frustrated and not being called out on missions but what you can't do anything unless the table tree castle map tells you to go somewhere Mm -hmm. And she either she has no responsibilities or they're very mundane, like, fill out this paperwork. I've done that. Really? In triplicate? No, I did, it in, I did more than triplicate, just on the safe side. Yeah, and I mean, to admit that Twilight's bored of reading, I mean, she's gotten more active since coming to Ponyville, but bored uh, of reading? I was expecting that joke of, like, when she said, I read all of these. And I expected, after she said, I read all of these 40 times! <laughs> yeah, I was expecting a number to be attached. Because I could easily expect Twilight to read that many books. I just expected her to attach a number because it would make the joke a little bit more punchy and it would work well for her because, you know, she's probably like you. Oh, I've read this book. Skim. I read it again. Okay, wait, wait, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you just flip, I mean, just... You're not even opening up the book that far. How can you even read those pages? <laughs> That's not that hard. There's plenty of room. You can't even see the ends of the lines. How are you reading that? What? I can see it just fine. Uh, just to inform you people, I am not allowed to touch her books. Because apparently I opened them too wide. Too wide being normal for most people. <laughs> okay, so I cringe when I see people reading sometimes. 
But normal, normal people's book opening is okay. It's the ones who read by folding the front cover back as if it was a magazine that get me. Okay, that gets me a little bit too. <laughs> Especially when they're most of the way through the book and they're still doing that, you're like, ah! <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think that's how you end up with the used books where like the entire spine is like curved, like you could rest a quarter in it. <laughs> but back to the pony episode, your thoughts? <laughs> Enjoyable. I think AJ being uncomfortable was a bit overplayed, especially since we've seen her at the Grand Galloping Gala of not getting overwhelmed by large crowds and high society ponies. Not that everybody in Manhattan is high society, but it is crowded. And that whole thing of her having trouble crossing the street because she was bumping into people. This pony can herd cattle. You're telling me she can't dodge a few ponies in a crosswalk? Mm-hmm. And that little nice scene right after that where they're like, I need, need friendship, need, need help, need help, need help. And then Charlie Brown reference. <laughs> There's actually two in that particular scene there. There's the pony who looks like Charlie Brown and the booth she's doing. Yeah, so Rarity has the booth, they use the phrase good grief, and then the one pony has a Charlie Brown-esque style, including the design on the shirt, but they did not go with classic yellow. Hmm. And he had the curly cue of hair on top, a curly cue of mane in this case, on top of his head. And apparently he's better at football than poor Charlie was. Because <laughs> the football was his cutie mark. So either he really likes the sport, or he actually plays the sport. <laughs> or he could be a manufacturer of footballs. Hmm. Good point, good point. Oh, also the return of Rarity Beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> she does it twice in this episode. I can't duplicate it, but she does this little thing kind of with her sound effects. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a nice little touch, because apparently that everyone liked her doing that, and apparently they got the hint. <laughs> Especially since we actually know that these episodes were manufactured recently. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when they showed AJ doing all the work in the park and how beat up she was getting, I was almost wondering, okay, is, are we actually going to go to the point where somebody's going to think she's like a homeless pony in need of help? Because <laughs> she <laughs> looks pretty bad. I was actually expecting um, some of the people we met before on the episode to walk by and see her doing all this hard work and jump in on it but that kind of came later with the whole play going on though i was kind of worried since it looked like they put it in such a way that it was the entrance to the park that everyone was kind of sitting in the street and not on the sidewalk but actually in the street <laughs> yeah so i'm really hoping that was a pedestrian only neighborhood Mm-hmm. and it was just like uh, all the nice touches and how they're giving us background information in about the world without um, really shoving it in our face too much like they actually used the play to actually put on the backstory of Coco Pamel's kind of uh, role model in this episode. Mm -hmm. You know, to do the play as the story of Charity coming to Manhattan, getting into theatrical costume design and starting the tradition not only gives us, the human audience, a lot of background, it reminds all the ponies watching it of Oh yeah, that's how this was, and that's how it started, and this is important. Speaking of important things, I'm putting that in quotes because it's never been pointed out as being that important, especially since she has a closet full of them. Poor AJ's hat. <laughs> that was sad. Everyone seems to think it's a priceless heirloom. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, unless she actually has one that's like she put away safely because, you know, she's AJ, so she did have something sentimental from her deceased or apparently dis miss missing parents, she would probably store it somewhere in her room and, you know, taken care of and wouldn't wear it around the farm because you're in a farm, you probably have several different pairs of different clothing that, permit that might be the same, so if one gets thrashed, hey, I don't worry about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a nice touch for Rarity to buy the replacement hat from the same pony that she, uh, I can't really say cheated, but finagled. Out of getting a sale. And what's really kind of interesting is, I think it's because they used the same model for him, he reminded me of the guy who had the puppet booth. Mm -hmm. Very similar design. I'm just glad we have more um, body shapes in the show now. And just watching this episode keeps reminding me of how far along they've come in animating this show. <laughs> just all the little things like eye movements and facial expressions and stuff like that, like Rarity at the beginning, like, aren't you excited? <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, someone give Rarity a chill pill, please, because damn. <laughs> yeah, some ponies really excited. Like, Twilight about the Griffin Capital excited. <laughs> I love how she was like, oh, we get to go, we get to go. Oh, thank you, Spike, for pointing out that my butt's not flashing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And all that sighing, it was great voice work. <sighs> yeah, it's just, what else is there in her life? I mean, you know, she was a princess for a while before this whole Table Tree Castle map started. And she was an active pony before this. So it's like, really, where is this sudden boredom coming from? Just because you haven't been called out on a mission doesn't mean stuff hasn't been happening. Oh, let's see, like, uh, with the bugbear? That was in the background. That was all six of you. So obviously stuff's still happening. Mm -hmm. So is she just getting her mane in a twist because she specifically isn't being called on the Table Tree Castle map? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, is it something more than that? And then going back to the play, I would like to know how that tape stays on fur for the little pieces <laughs> of paper that had the cutie marks on them. Oh, yeah, that is a nice little touch. And also, yeah, what kind of tape are they using? Fabric tape? What? <laughs> yeah, because I would think that you would do it more makeup artist style and, you know, actually put the other cutie mark in. But then it wouldn't be obvious to the human audience that the job was done. And also, apparently, disguising your cutie mark isn't a common thing because the amount of shock that Starlight Glimmer used paint to cover up her cutie mark. I mean, but that was a whole betrayal thing also, but apparently it's not thought of, so obviously it's not a makeup artist technique. Mm. Or they're such a small group that they don't have that kind of makeup, because mm -hmm. it has to resist sweating and stuff like that. Also, just taking off the tape at the end of the night. <laughs> Be careful, man. Be Ouch! <laughs> Why did we decide to use duct tape tonight? Because we're out of the other tape. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, w that would be a good instance to be, like, using some baby oil or olive oil or something. Mm-hmm. So do you have any other points? Mm, no, I think that's it. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, the lesson, you know, about oh, yeah. being able to do a small thing. You know, people not helping because they don't think that what they have time to do is valuable. But really, every little bit is valuable. Yep, and even if your little bit doesn't seem to do anything right now, a lot of little bits over time create a really big result. Example, water running down a hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be doing much, but eventually it will create the Grand Canyon <laughs> and other geological processes, but small things add up. Yeah, they do in many different ways, you know, in effort, in finance, in friendship, in work, in almost anything, you know. One thing piles on top of another, and in some cases it's one person working on something by themselves, and in other cases it's lots of people doing small things that have a huge result. Mm -hmm. Also, AJ is dang fast at building a stage. <laughs> no kidding. Also, finishing it just before they perform. I'm like, yeah, okay, really? <laughs> and has the paint had time to dry? Was that just, like, finishing touches she was doing? <laughs> ah, the miracles of her ponies, people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here we thought unicorns were all-powerful. <laughs> ah. Well, overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I liked all the nice touches, and once again, bashing people's headcanons about that hat's not important, people. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, I never had that headcanon. I just thought it was a hat. It was the little touch that screamed, I'm a country girl! <laughs> Yes, because living on a farm, wearing her hair in a ponytail, and speaking with a southern slash country accent and using countryisms did not make it obvious enough. <laughs> I just remembered the season opener. I can't do my countryisms anymore. <laughs> ah, like I said, overall, I liked the episode. I liked the little touches. I love the continuity and. Just, it's starting to really feel like a nice season. I, I like how the season's feeling right now. Yeah. A couple minor hiccups for me, you know, mainly in the way AJ was portrayed, 
think that was overplayed. And then that little wink she and Coco shared at the end. I'm like, could you make that any more obvious? <laughs> also three rarity episodes in a row. And I, I just remember that. <laughs> uh, bet your boots on it. I don't have any boots. I find they chafe. <laughs> uh, I like the ticking at literary jokes. I do it too much in real life. Ember knows. <laughs> Quite. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 16, Made in Manhattan. Yes, puns! Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. Really like Lux's art? You can check Lux out on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Really like Lux's art? And would like some high quality versions or maybe some of your own? He is currently accepting commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.